Thanks for joining our webinar with Without Wire. My name is Allie Keller. I am in sales and marketing here at the TM Group, and I'll be your host. Joining us today, we have Steve Dwyer, the VP of Sales and Marketing, and Jason Jones, the product consultant. If you have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. And we'll also be recording this, so if you have any follow-up questions, I can answer them then. And with that being said, I will hand things over to Steve. Thank you, Allie. So my name is Steve Dwyer. As Ali said, Vice President of Sales and Marketing here at Without Wire Inventory Sciences. And you can see in the agenda, I'll be covering the first couple items, the product overview, and then turning it over to Jason Jones for the product demonstration. And then we'll have some wrap up, answer questions, and get you on your way. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're pleased to be uh, sponsored by TM Group, a long partnership that we've shared that's lasted more than 10 years and uh, many clients together that uh, are referenceable. And so that's what we're always after at the end of the day is um, satisfying our customers. We at Without Wire talk about uh, inventory sciences and I'll come to that here in the next slide. But uh, today's feature, we're gonna focus on our industry leading warehouse management system for food and beverage, biopharma and clients, consumer packaged goods, omni-channel, retail type of uh, environments. And really today we want to help you learn how you can get started with this powerful mobile inventory management system and talk about some of the capabilities in terms of barcoded mobility in receiving, put away, replenishment, kitting, manufacturing or light assembly, pick pack ship, real time ABC cycle counts, and reporting that can give you that KPI, key performance indicators and dashboarding in a on-premise environment or cloud hosted. As uh, Without Wire Inventory Sciences, we really talk about three key ingredients as your trusted advisor in partnership with TM Group our adaptive architecture built homogeneously on the Microsoft technology stack, and our without wire intuitive technologies. And you'll see them sprinkled throughout our presentation and demonstrate today, things like intelligent license plates to very efficiently label product and efficiently move large quantities of a single item or mixed items very efficiently. We, you may see us, in your area, look for this truck. It's uh, the power of the scan of Without Wire Inventory Sciences. Uh, but you'll see on our website similar kinds of themes. But we had fun heading to GPUG NAVUG Summit in Nashville last fall. And uh, some of you may have met with us there. As a best of breed warehouse management system, we have a variety of functionality on the inbound and the outbound through your warehouse, but also manufacturing, kitting, value-added types of activities, and field service for those remote sites, trucks, trunks, uh, or other vehicles, or uh, just remote lo locations or warehouses. And uh, we'll touch on some of those capabilities, along with our administrative, where there's cycle counting, a full physical inventory to satisfy an audit, or inventory adjustment uh, with security and permissions. Without Wire was founded in 2001. Some of you may know us as Apolis, the art of inventory. We did rebrand a couple years ago to more reflect our focus on inventory management and the sciences of inventory. As a proven solution, we have over 1,200 active sites around the world a real-time integration to Dynamics products such as GP, NAV, and SL. We also work with Dynamics 365 and Intact as other ERP systems that you may have. We have a unique methodology in how we scope, design, and deploy your solution that provides a very rapid return on your investment. You can find out more information on our website and our knowledge, full knowledge base out there, or our YouTube channel where we have case study videos such as Combat Medical, where they had an application where they needed real-time integration to Dynamics, and they had 
expiration date products, lot track part products, and serial tracked all in their environment. Uh, they supply kits and backpacks, medical supplies to our military, and you can imagine there are some expiring goods in there that need to stay fresh. We also watch closely the trends in supply chain that align with Microsoft. Microsoft's mobile-first, cloud-first world is something that they're looking to boost customer engagement, provide mobile personal computing, reinvent productivity and business processes, and create a cloud infrastructure with their Microsoft Azure Cloud to turn digital assets into intelligent insights. In fact, we are watching trends in social, the use it free and I want it now kind of applications that you can find out there with your smart device, whether it would be Uber, your ride on demand, or uh, if you listen to Microsoft's general manager, Marco Parasek, he talks about customer buying habits that are changing. Customers are informed buyers. They have instant access to products they are buying and can try them in seconds. They're not being hunted. They are the hunters. So as you know, with your smart device, you can get weather or music or um, you know, Uber we talked about and mapping tools and uh, our system without wire is also out there. And in fact, we follow the TurboTax model. This is coming on the tax season now. And as you may know, if you've tried this, you can start for free. You can go all the way through the TurboTax online application without paying any money. You can know exactly what you owe Uncle Sam. And of course, if you wanna print documents or file your taxes, you will have to get your credit card out. But following that, that same kind of model, if you look at our use it free system on the front page of our website, withoutwire.com, you can go into our use it free experience and download the app right to your device, tablet, phone, uh, can be a very rugged device or a uh, smart device as well. We'll touch, touch on that a little bit more later in the slide deck, but uh, looking at some of the key verticals of medical, biopharma, pharmaceutical, there is what's called the Drug Supply Chain Securities Act, which we watch closely. And if you're in this environment, you're probably watching it closely as well, where there is uh, a 10-year plan with barcoding mobility requirements and some compliance due by November of last year. And so you're gonna be looking at uh, enabling verification of uh, drug product identifiers in ways to enhance detection notifications of illegitimate product in the supply chain and facilitating more efficient recalls. And we actually have a recall video recording which in about three minutes you can lock down all your current product in your warehouse with a certain item lot combination that's in question. You can uh, make sure that all product from that particular vendor is coming into your facility with a quality hold status. And then you can do a customer search of who has received this product from you over a date range and notify those customers all within about a three to five minute process. Similarly, food and beverage the Food Safety Modernization Act is also legislation that we watch relative to preventive controls, inspection and compliance, food safety, responsiveness, and the mandatory recalls for all food products, and enhanced partnerships that are taking place. A sampling of our food and beverage clientele looks like this, and uh, you would probably recognize, some of you in the area might recognize Focus Hope, a TM group and without wire client. There's many others in terms of oatmeal, uh, pretzels, sugar substitutes, uh, olive condiments for the uh, in restaurant industry, and animal feed and pet food types of clients along with some beverage. If you look at pharma, medical device, they tend to congregate up here in this section, whether it's nutraceuticals or pharmacy or surgical types of serialized parts. And other types of chemical, whether it's chemical distribution, 
for manufacturing, for plastics manufacturing, and CPG clients, consumer packaged goods, uh, whether, whether it's wipes and other types of uh, consumer and industrial products, or uh, you may recognize lava lamp, uh, uh, a couple others, lighting supply, the distribution of different kinds of light supplies. And then looking at field service clients, we have serve, we serve the verticals of lighting, fire security, and telecom, HVAC and mechanical contractors, medical and industrial equipment, testing and inspection, oil, gas, and solar. And so Murray Percival, another client you may recognize uh, in your area. Uh, so just a wide variety cross section here of different clients that we serve in that regard. And then here's some recent Microsoft Azure cloud clients that we have. Uh, Swisher Suites, a brand you might recognize, and you can see medical uh, Mofi Sag is a accessory company for iPhone and other devices. From a field service mobility standpoint, it's managing trucks as though they were a mini warehouse or trunks or closets. And how does your ERP system, maybe you have a job creation tool and like a field service management that might do scheduling and dispatch, and then our without wire system. And how do all three of these work together like a three-legged stool? There's a lot of different job creation tools. You may recognize some of these, GP Field Service, Key to Act, Field Point Alert, and Field Connect. They do these tasks. We do a different task, and I want to share how we complement three here together. We talked about the verticals that we serve, but if we look at an illustration here of how Without Wire works as a field service inventory management tool, your ERP is where you're going to still create those purchase orders. We will receive with Without Wire and provide the results back to the, your ERP. We may move that inventory through transfers out to satellite warehouses or to tech trucks and bins. Ultimately, they may issue parts based on replenishment schedules of min max or the parts needed to create and complete a job. Will they consume parts, possibly add parts on the fly, and then communicate maybe through open API integration the request for inventory and the consumption of that inventory. Return parts that were thought to be needed but didn't turn out needed all the way back to the main warehouse for refurb, restock, or return to vendor. And then we also want to do ABC cycle counts of that truck on a periodic basis so we make sure the inventory stays accurate. Some clients have gone further to use third-party tools that can allow them GPS capabilities to know where vehicle 23 is, truck 68, and package 14. And they actually use that to find the nearest truck that might have the part. Rather than go back to the main warehouse, I'll meet them at a coffee shop. We'll swap some parts. We'll have real-time tracking back at headquarters so they know what's going on. And just a much more efficient flow of inventory with less paper and data entry. We have gone pretty far in terms of how we can transfer inventory from a main warehouse to a satellite or second warehouse and even a third warehouse. And how can techs who are assigned to warehouse two communicate and transfer inventory with a tech in, tied to warehouse three? So this can get a little complicated, but we have what we call standard site transfers, cross site transfers, and intersite moves by techs which we found ways to make that very efficient and intuitive. Looking at an overall schematic here, if you have your ERP, and that could be, again, Great Plains, Navision, Solomon, Dynamics 365, Intact, doesn't matter. You can connect with our system through our Smart Connect integration, or we use Plumline on the SL integration or open APIs using JSON objects, RESTful services. And we also have a standalone import export capability with CSV files. 
but your ERP is still the master of items, customers, vendors, purchase orders, and sales orders, along with invoicing. We tend to take lot tracking and multi-bin out of the ERP. We'll handle that within our uh, very efficient warehouse inventory management system. We would be in, in charge of purchase order receiving, sales order fulfillment, as in picking, replenishment, bin transfer, inventory adjustment, and cycle counts. So the purchase order is created. It flows into our system. We're checking for updates. When that truck arrives, we're going to lock that PO, do the receiving, and send the results back to your ERP to be reviewed, posted, signed, synced. Sales orders are created in your ERP. We are, again, looking for those updates. We'll grab the, the sales order, pick it, pack it, print final documents, and ship it right from the handheld or stage it if needed. And again, provide those fulfillment records back to the ERP to be reviewed and posted. Similarly, with manufacturing, if you do get into bill of materials, maybe full MOs or quick MOs, we have great tools and many ways to attack manufacturing to drive efficiency, reduce paper, and do it in a mobile environment. Uh, what we call good, better, best treatments of finished goods and the raw materials against the bill of material so that you can decrement, the, decrement those raw materials as you create new finished goods. Receiving is an area that we've built out recently to get a little more complicated. Rather than just recognize the item number, its description, its lot tracked, and its lot number, one, two, three, its quantity that's coming in on that purchase order, we, for some clients, are taking that further into what we call item attribute collection. So after I confirm the lot and the quantity against the purchase order, this client wants to collect additional information, such as did the product arrive at the correct temperature, what was the vendor's lot number, and what was the manufacturing date or the receipt date. We can lock those values and do rapid receiving of more items as they come off the truck. Another example, perhaps you have a item with its description, its lot number, and you want to grab the expiration date and the national drug code at unit dose. Enter the values, lock those fields, and hit OK and move on to the next line. At the end, you may want to grab an external signature. Perhaps you damaged some of the product or you found it damaged coming out the truck. And so you want the driver, uh, as in the external signature, to sign off on the marked damaged items. Go ahead, and, go ahead and hit OK, and that signature then travels with that transaction. Others have taken it even farther where they need disclaimers such as my signature certifies that I am a licensed practitioner in the above state, and I've requested and received the indicated samples for the medical needs of my patients. We can allow that as well. Jason will briefly show you our request inventory when we get to the demonstration portion today, where you can select certain items, go to next, adjust the quantities, just as you need them, and make a request of inventory to be picked at your main warehouse so that when you arrive there tomorrow morning, it's all staged, ready for you to very quickly pick up and move on your way to your job. It's so a way to avoid a lot of standing around, a lot of waiting, and keep a digital trail of exactly what your, client, your field tech or other remote warehouse is looking for and requesting. I did mention our knowledge base, which is out at withoutwire.com. It's basically our full user manual out there, so I invite you to check it out, where you have a variety of topics you can search on. You can take a topic like picking and see all the articles that we have on picking. You could look at our open API for integration and see our full uh, API keys out there ready to be used. We also embed Microsoft Power BI, which Jason will be taking you on a little tour of when we get to the demo. So we're using those leading technologies from Microsoft and providing to you them to you at a very affordable um, value-added type of solution. We're also looking at the hot trends in mobility and glimpse into the 
for, we probably four years ago got the Google Glass and did some, some simple inventory apps on there. But we're continuing to watch how a field service tech might be utilizing uh, the ability through a glass to access diagrams or videos on how to, if you're getting into complex areas. What could some of these other things mean to supply chain in the future? But looking more at today, what we're doing is mounting tablets, very affordable Android-based tablets or iPads, to forklifts, powering a Bluetooth uh, mobile device by the forklift power itself as well and mounting it. And Jason will be showing you some other device options that are very rugged or very affordable and uh, much like a, you know, just simply a smart device. And a camera, as it turns out, does a really good job of scanning barcodes if you're in relatively low volume. So you can lock down, you can mount your iPad, you can pistol grip your phone, you can put a wrapper with a rapid scanning around your phone, wearables such as a, a wrist strap on an iTouch we have customers using. We talked about the Bluetooth and the iPad mounted on a forklift. We also have multilingual capability, very easily toggled throughout our system. And really, as we think about barcode mobility and automation, it's around driving return on investment in your operations. So we're looking at ways to reduce labor, remove redundant data entry and data entry errors, take away some of the memorization through our intuitive intelligence, and by making it an easy to use, familiar application on a smart device, can avoid some retraining. We talked about the different ways to integrate our system, and it can really integrate to any ERP system, giving you that full scalability. So if you move an ERP system, you can actually take us with you and preserve your investment. Without Wire is an award-winning application. You can find us out there as one of the top 50 mobile apps for warehouse managers. I'd invite you to do this if you have a smart device with you right now. You can actually go to the App Store, type in Without Wire, all one word, and you'll find our, our system there. You can install it and get activated, and our product consultants are standing by to help you with data setup and really explore our system on, on your own or with our assistance. We're happy to help. So with that, what I'm going to do now is turn it over to Jason Jones, who's going to take you through our, a demonstration of our system. So please hold any questions you have toward the end, and Allie will field those for us. All right. Thank you, Steve. Again, my name is Jason Jones. I'm going to be going through the product demonstration today. I have set up a pharmaceutical company to go through workflow. This is going to include distribution, field service, as well as a light manufacturing demonstration as well. Um, some of the topics are going to be rapid fire, so again, if you want to dig any deeper, please get in contact with me, and we can go through anything that you might have questions on. I am going to be using my iPhone 6 that I've streamed through my laptop here, so I will be going through the tiles on my phone. Behind my cell phone will be the web console, so it will be two pieces working together in real time. Again. I'm using my iPhone 6. You can use rugged eye devices from industry leaders like Honeywell and Zebra, as well as consumer products like a Linea Pro boot scanner, as well as a forklift mounted tablet with a Bluetooth scanner. That icon on the top right can also be used if you're going to or use it free to scan barcodes. Again, if you have questions or want to know about any compatibility for current devices on hand, we do have that information on our website, so feel free to check it out. Going over an overview of our web console, in the center you can see the Power BI dashboard with SQL Server reporting services embedded. This can be fully customized to fit your needs and expanded and shown throughout the warehouse. Again, this can show any kind of metrics that are important as far as um, top items by volume, vendor performance, as well as total transactions. 
on the top right of the web console, you can see that we're currently signed in as support. You can view or change your profile. Currently, we are in warehouse. And again, this is a pharma, so I have a field representative in the system currently. We also have an integrated support center. So if you have any problems with anything, just request a support ticket to our support console. We will get back to you. If you have a quick question, you can use the chat feature to get into contact with the product consultant or developer if you have any questions on navigating the site. Basics with the mobile device on the top left, you can see the hamburger menu. We can see that we're currently signed in as John Doe at Without Wire. We can toggle between warehouses as well. So again, you can go from rep one to the warehouse, similar to the web console on the top right. And currently we have around 20 tiles on the mobile device. The blue tiles are gonna show most of the field service functionality. The orange is gonna show basic warehouse distribution, as well as some light manufacturing. And the same goes for the LP operations and replenishment tile. You can dig a little bit into setting up your system. On the left-hand side, again, you'll see the inbound Inventory operations, outbound council. A lot of setup is going to be done in the system maintenance, and we can create some users and security user maintenance. You can see currently we have two users signed up. So just simply click add, create a username and email. They should be, you can use the same for both, create a password, and create a role for them, such as app admin, which I'm currently set up as. You can also set up pickers, receivers. Um, field service, etc. You can also assign sites to that user simply by toggling back and forth and clicking save. If you want to alter the access that certain users could have, you would go into system maintenance, security, list groups. You can see the current list groups that we have in the system. For instance, a picker, if you want to increase or decrease the access that they would have, you would simply go into the picker role check or uncheck the boxes next to individual tiles on the mobile device and those tiles will then appear or disappear based on the usability for that individual. Click save and that will update for that picker role. Another key part of setting up your system would be creating and editing sites. And I mentioned that we have two sites currently in the system, Rep1 and Warehouse. If we had a rep two, we can simply create new site. Enter the address and additional information and allow inventory requests. As Steve was talking about, about different techs requesting inventory back and forth in the field, depending on their current inventory levels. We also have some configurations available for the users, simply going into configuration settings. You can see currently, we have the auto populate expiration dates. A lot of my items are going to be date tracked items. Other core values could include serial number or lot. You can also have basic items that have no um, additional factors when coming into the system. So again, those will auto populate. Some other key configuration settings could be the internal external signature, um, allow users to create inventory in the field, et cetera. Once you check those boxes, just refresh at the bottom, and those will be pushed out to the user. Again, we talked about ERP integration. If you're using the Use It Free demo trial, you can go to Data Setup Tools under System Maintenance, and we do have our template saved out there for users to upload inventory bins, vendors, customers, etc. I have done that prior to today, so when we go through my mobile device, I will have those orders already loaded to the system. And again, you can see I have a wide array of tiles. We're gonna start with the receiving tile. I can see current orders loaded into the system. You can see current vendors, status of the order, as well as delivery date. So if we go into PO100, you can see that it's complete. Select yes, and it will be removed from the system or the queue. We can go in individual lines by simply tapping so we can see that this over-the-counter medication that's coming into the system is 0001. 
I can click on it. Standard receiving would auto populate that expiration date and quantity. Pressing OK would be the happy path. Again, clicking into the line, you can go into the options. So we can say something was damaged with this 1112. The damage screen will show the max quantity. I can type in the quantity damaged of two. And the system is going to auto-populate the received amount, 22, as well as the damage. Those are going to be put into a damage bin automatically. So you won't have to put those two that were damaged in any particular area. They're automatically going to go to the damage bin. On the final line, you can see that we have 48 of the cough drops coming in. If a vendor changes up a barcode, we can swipe on the line and acquire barcode. So it bring us to the acquire barcode screen. And again, if you're using your mobile device, you can click on the barcode label on the top right, open it up, and use any kind of barcode going forward. Going forward, that 2223 will be recognized if I scan that barcode that I just acquired. Again, that can be used if vendors change barcodes or you have multiple vendors for the same item number with different barcodes. All right, we can see all three lines have been grayed out. This purchase order can be completed. So let's select yes, and it will be removed from the queue. So from the receiving tile, we can then go to the put away, and it's going to show the items that we just received with the different dates and quantities to put away. Similar to receiving, we can simply tap through. It's going to show us the primary bin location or, or locations throughout the warehouse where that inventory is currently held. So it's bin one. It's going to allow us to move that 0001 from the, from the bin to bin one. Go through, showing current locations. Okay, we'll move that inventory into that inventory location. We can see that update in real time by going to the web console and to the receiving. Our receipts are break, broken down by date, vendor, or status. So I'm going to include everything in here. We just currently received PO100, currently receiving complete. You can view the details online. Again, this might be a system administrator going in to double check what was received on which date. You can also see which user did the receiving when it was started as well as when it ended. Going back to the mobile device, we can now go through a sales order, enter the picking tile. And we can see current orders outstanding. So this SO102 from Lansing Health Center had a date of 2-9. It's going to be in the main zone. You can separate your warehouse into multiple zones and assign pickers to various zones, whether it be a freezer or refrigerated section, main warehouse, or overstock. So enter this SO102. And I see a comment come up, rush. So this is going to be a rush order. And there's going to be three items. The system is going to bring you in a serpentine pattern throughout the warehouse to be the most efficient. So it's going to start at that bin one for this 0001. So I can scan that item number and location. as well as expiration date, it's going to populate the quantity. So showing that I picked 24, quantity to pick was 24, so that line can be committed by pressing OK. Again, that line will be grayed out. So we can move on to 1112, scan the location, enter in the expiration date of the item. Again, it's showing as 48. You do have the option, if you did not want to pick from bin 2, you could go to next location, if there's any other inventory locations throughout the warehouse. You can also toggle between unit of measure. Yeah. 
multiple units of measure, you didn't want to count the 48, you could count the boxes instead of each quantity. On the final item, the 2223, again, we can go through the options. Expiration date. Let's say we can short that. So the system is going to show that we picked zero and shorted that third line. So all three lines have been grayed out. We can complete the sales order by selecting OK. If you'd like to stage the order, you can select no to ship. If you're ready to go and it's out the door, you can select yes. So that item will now be removed from the queue. It will no longer show on the picker's mobile device. And an administrator can get real-time updates on the web console on what was just sent out the door. So again, it's going to show all orders in our outbound council. You can break it down by date, route, status, or type. Going into details, okay, this is a transfer order. So this was sent, say, to a rep. You can get the user, start time, what was sent, et cetera. All right, going back to the mobile device, so we went through receiving, put away, picking. Some of our other warehouse features will be shown as well in the orange. We can go to the move tile, and we can move an item from one bin to the other. So if we select move, it's going to prompt us for an item. So let's say we're going to move some Type one zero zero there's zero 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 one excuse me with the expiration date of one two of nineteen and that's going to go from its primary location bin one we're just going to move seven of them to bin two again unit of measure is also broken down you can move boxes so again that will be updated with a current quantity of thirty. And break it down by quantity we want to move and select OK. So now those items will then be in bin two. We can get a real time update on that as well. Another great value added feature of the mobile device is what we call a main screen scan. So we're on the home screen. If we scan that barcode of the item that we just moved, it's going to show that 0001 in both bin one as well as bin two. And those are going to be three boxes moved. So the quantity is going to show each, even though we moved three boxes. And another feature of that main screen scan is swiping on the item. So if we want to swipe right to left, it's going to show us four options. You can acquire a barcode, request a count for this item, or make inventory adjustments. So that's another way to update the quantity in that bin location, if we click adjust, it can be broken down by each box palette again. So if we want to click box, it's showing us that currently there's three boxes. If we do another count, we can change that to two. And we can say that that was due to a variance. You can add notes as well. So if you want to Add detailed notes that will add another level of trackability and traceability to your current inventory accounts that will travel through to that adjustment. And you can view that on our library of reports as well that we'll be going over shortly. All right, going back to the main screen, again, you can see that inventory adjustment tile as well. That's another way to make inventory adjustments aside from the main screen. The second item we can go through on the basic features would be that cycle count. Again, we create a main screen scan of an item. If we want to just request it directly from the warehouse, we can swipe on that line right to left. You're going to see a count. So we are seeing a little lag in uh, it's catching up now. It looks like it caught up. There okay. We go. I'm sorry. So we can request a count again from that main screen scan after a swipe. 
If you're in the warehouse and you think inventory counts might be off in this 965, you can select count. And it's going to let the system administrator know that the inventory in that <clears throat> item location needs counted. So we can go into inventory operations and look at the count console. This will give us a background on current counts that have been completed throughout the system. You can go in and view the details as well. So if you want to assign that count that we just requested from the mobile device, it's going to be located in count assignment. We can select that 3334, the number, the item number that we just scanned, and we can assign it to John Doe. So John can then go into his mobile device and that count will show in this cycle count tile. So the user in the warehouse is working with the system administrator to get an accurate count. He's letting them know that counts might be off. He's going to go in and see that bin 4 needs counted for item number 3334, which are the sample packs that our manufacturer kitted. Clicking on the icon will bring him to the blind cycle count. It's not showing the user how many are listed in stock. This will add a little bit to the count. Again, they can be broken down by each box or pallet. We'll keep it at each and we'll say that there's 1,000. They can complete that count by selecting OK and navigating back. You will then be done with the count if you want to complete it. It will ask you yes or no. You will select yes and the user is brought back to the main screen. So the information from that cycle count is then going to be sent to the system administrator for approval. So we'll go to that count console once again, and we'll see that we have one count that currently needs review. It was assigned to John Doe, the item, as well as going into the details, we'll give that system administrator some background on what the user was seeing. So it's going to default to recount items with a greater or less than zero quantity variance. That can also be changed to a percentage as well for each item. So in this particular case, we knew that we had 965. I put 1,000 in. It's automatically going to check the recount box. This allows you to quickly reassign the count to the same or a different user in the system if you want to have someone else count. And it gives background on quant quantity as well as percentage variance and the user. If you'd like to accept the current counts, you can update and complete. And the current quantity count for that 3334 would be 1,000. We can update and complete. Going back into the mobile, we can get that real-time update in quantity by doing a main screen scan once again and showing current inventory of 1,000. All right, so that's going to complete the distribution part of the demonstration. We're going to move on to the field service. So going back to my mobile device, a lot of the mobile functionality will be in the blue tiles. So currently, I can tap at the top of that mobile device, and I see that I'm in warehouse. I am going to switch to my representative one in the field and complete some of these field service functions. So again, in the blue tile, I do have some jobs loaded to the system. These can be stops for this pharmaceutical rep to drop off the kitted items to say Northeast Health, Motown Medical, et cetera. But if we want to click in one of the jobs, and these are going to be the sample packs that the rep is handing out to the medical field location. It's at 3334. So it's currently requesting 12. So just like the picking screen that we just went through, I can scan that barcode. It's going to give me the current expiration date of inventory in that representative one's inventory bin. And a quantity of 12. Same rules apply. You do have the options there as well. You can go to the next location as well as short. So if we want to complete this drop off of 12 kits, we can select OK. 
that line will then be grayed out. You will see that blue icon at the top right. That's going to put the items on a license plate. Again, Steve briefly mentioned license plate in his um, run through of basic features. A license plate is a group of items on a single pallet tag, possibly. It's going to give you a little bit quicker access to everything located in a location. So you can put multiple items on a license plate with one scan. You can see everything located in a particular location. So we can select OK at the bottom right. And that job is no longer located in that rep queue of items to go through. Going back to the main screen, again, we just went through jobs. Say the user did not have enough inventory on hand, they can go to the Manage Parts and Supply screen. This can allow them to stop at, say, an over-the-counter location or distribution site for item 3334. And we can simply enter in the expiration date and a number that they are going to Acquire, so we can say just a random number. We can add notes as well. So we can say that they stop at a distribution site for additional product. Selecting OK will add those eight units into the inventory location for the user. Again, this can be used to add as well as um, take away parts or inventory in that representative's location. Another way to add inventory into the rep's location would be this request inventory. So we can enter the request inventory. It's going to show current locations in the system that allow inventory requests. And we can see that warehouse one is currently the only site that allows requests. We can select next. And it's going to give current items in the system that can be requested. So we can say that that representative wants 3334, some more samples or product to give out to reps. Swiping right to left, you can add a particular count by tapping on the plus or minus. You can also select a number by using the keypad. Select OK for 100 items. And that's going to send a transfer order to the warehouse to be picked and shipped to this user. So again, this can be picked up by that field rep. As Steve mentioned, say he was getting low on inventory and requested it the night before, so it would be ready for him in the morning when he was ready to do his run. Another tile would be consume parts. So it's automatically, or it's prompted you to use items in your whip bin. You can use inventory locations. So say this rep one bin. You can consume parts to a particular job. So again, if in this case you wanted to consume to a certain medical facility, you can enter the job that was loaded to the system or leave it blank. All right, going to next, tapping on the line that you're going to consume. And again, same kind of scenario as managing parts. You swipe and key in or toggle between additional parts again. When we're going through configuration settings, we required external signature when consuming parts. So this would be the field, say, medical representative that's going to be receiving this kit number. Another feature would be the get and put. This would be putting, it, putting items into your... So we can use the get tile. We can select the item number as well as expiration date and current quantity on hand. We'll say we only want a few to be put in our whip for so this John whip. I'll select OK and that's going to automatically move those four items into my whip bin and you can then consume or use for jobs. If you want to put them back into the inventory location, simply go to the put screen, type in the same information and you're going to put it back into that inventory location or rep one bin and select OK. So our whip bin is then empty, so there's no more items. You can go back to the main screen, and that's going to complete the field service portion of the demonstration. We're going to briefly go over some manufacturing. 
You can manufacture directly from the mobile through the manufacturing tile. That's jobless manufacturing. That's going to create inventory on the fly. We do have a web console or a manufacturing console on the web. Simply go to inventory operations, manufacturing, manufacturing console. It's going to break it down by date. You can see currently we've only had one run of this sample pack. You can add a job as well as kit. So let's say we want to make some more kits of that cold, cold medicine sample pack. It's going to be made in the manufacturing bin for item 3334. It's going to auto populate that expiration date. You can add a manufacturing number as well as a quantity. So we'll create 10 of those cold flu kits. And it's going to show current quantity available for this kit and quantity used. So we'll see that we have plenty of quantity available to complete these 10 kits. Simply creating kits, that kit button at the bottom, we'll create those 10 kits and provide a license plate. So again, this can be a pallet tag used to scan items and get information. So if you had multiple items on that license plate, you can scan that. So there, Jason, you're yeah. pulling in the bill of materials yeah. that is tied to this kit, verifying there's enough of all those raw materials to produce these finished goods. Absolutely. Great. You can see that with a black line around the items. If it's red, you don't have enough inventory on, on hand to complete that kit. So I'll go back to the warehouse screen and scan that license plate. It's going to give me a current readout of everything located on that license plate. Going back to the web console, I did mention we have a full library of reports located on the web console. There's around 60. And again, I had date tracked items currently in the system. We have an expired product report that we can show. So if you want to get a rundown of items currently in the system that are expired or are going to expire on a particular date, you can look at that at a few clicks here. I will enter the percentage sign, which is a wild card, going to show every item in this warehouse location that's currently expired. I can click view report. And it looks like currently I have two items that have have expired. They're automatically going to be put on a QA hold as well as give you the actual expiration date as well as bin location. Again, you can create this date into the future. So if you wanted to see everything that would expire one year from now, for example, it's going to give you a lot more items that are going to fall within that time period. So Jason, here, those items marked QA hold, if I were going to pick those to ship them out the door, could I do that? No, it's not going to allow you to select the QA hold and get them out the door. Those are expired, so they're going to be in a salvage location more than likely and be written out of the system. And that's going to conclude my portion of the demonstration. Uh, I think we have a couple of questions here as well as some uh, wrap-up slides. Yeah, wrap slides from Steve. So. So, this is PowerPoint just right there to get me there. So, Thank you, Jason, for that demonstration. Hopefully this gave you a real good feel for the power of the system and the, uh, and the usability, hopefully ease of use in your view. Jason's an expert at the system, so he's clicking around very quickly, and we're here to help you as you get started with our system as well. Maybe you've uh, done a free download already, and uh, we can help you get set up. Coming back, just in wrap-up, to where we begin, we talked about without wire inventory sciences and those three key ingredients. Hopefully we gave you a good idea today of uh, what we're talking about as your trusted advisor in partnership with TM Group, the adaptive architecture of our solution, and the Microsoft technology stack, and you saw some of those technologies, uh, intuitive technologies, such as the license plates, barcode acquire, main screen scan, searchability, et cetera. If you saw something you liked here, here's some upcoming events. We're going to be at the SL conference as a sponsor in St. Louis in April. 
We attend summits each year, and it's going to be in Phoenix in October. Hope to see you there. Uh, we also have a knowledge base that I mentioned, some blogs, ERP software blog, distribution software blog.com, and we we do monthly executive briefings, and we record those and loco locate those out on our website. This is being recorded by the TM Group and Alley, and they will have this available as well for you to view on demand. And with that, uh, I would like to open it up, Allie, if we have any questions. Yep, we have a couple here. The first one being, does your inventory management system work with all versions of GP? Okay, great question. Uh, Without Wire has been around for 17 years, as I mentioned. Uh, our founder and others on our team here are from the Fargo and North Dakota area where Great Plains was formed and uh, or founded. We're in Minneapolis, Minnesota, so just down the street, uh, next door neighbors to, to Fargo. So yes, we have been serving the GP community for many years and have compatibility all the way back to GP8. So uh, not an issue there. And um, so I'll turn it back to you, Allie, for other questions. Yep, we have one more. Um, if we decide to go cloud, where do you host the solution? Okay. Great, and thank you all for attending here today. As you heard me say at the beginning, we have on-premise available and cloud as two deployment methods, same product, so you're getting the same power and functionality with our solution. We, by default, so when we spin up the user tree, it will be hosted on the Microsoft Azure Cloud. We also know that in partnership with TM Group, they have cloud hosting providers as well uh, and solutions that they have available that is also an option for our software. So really flexible in that regard. And back to you, Allie, any more questions for us? There are no more questions. So I just wanna say a huge thank you to Without Wire and Steve and Jason for presenting today. And thank you everyone for joining. Once again, I will follow up with everyone and I'll send you this recording. So thank you so much, Steve and Jason, and I hope everyone has a great day. You're welcome, Allie, thanks. Thank you.